Now for this part of the question, what I'm going to want to do is add quite a lot of information to this diagram. What I'd want to do is start up here. B was originally up at a position like this, say, a distance H above the ground. So I'm going to mark this in as the ground here. We've got this as the height H that it falls. Just mark that in. OK. And when it was up here, it was released from rest. So originally, this was 0 meters per second. And as it falls this distance height, um, of height h, it obviously gains speed and hits the ground, as we're told. It hits the ground with a speed and then immediately comes to instantaneous rest afterwards. I find a lot of people think that that means that this is now zero. It's not. You've just got a velocity here. Let's just call this the final velocity v for b. vb meters per second. Now, as this falls to the ground, then obviously this particle at a, okay, went from an initial position. Let's say it was over here somewhere originally. It started from rest worked its way across here and when B hit the ground A, let's imagine, got to here. Okay. Now, we're told that when it gets to here this is a third H from the pulley, so I'll mark that in as a third H. Okay, let's just do that. And our job is to find out what speed it reaches p at. So when it gets to here, we've got to find out that speed, the final velocity, if you like, of a. Now, when it was here, this is very important, that this was the point where b hit the ground. So when it gets here, this speed is going to be exactly the same as this speed here. So, I'm going to call that the initial speed of A, so UA at this point. UA is going to be equal to VB. Now, in order to get this speed here, I'm going to need to do two things. I'm going to need to find out what this initial speed is by finding out what the final speed of B is as it hits the ground. Once I've got that, I'm going to need to then go on and find out the acceleration of A as it moves from here to here. As it slows down, it'll be a deceleration. I'm going to need to find out that new deceleration. Then I'm going to, it's called it A by the way, then I'm going to need to use a SUVAT equation in order to find out that final velocity. So I hope you can follow what I'm saying, but I'll take you through it now. Okay, so we're going to consider B first of all. So we'll work up here. This is going to be a bit cramped because I'm going to try and do it in all this space, okay? So do bear with me on this. Consider B. So we're going to do a SUVAT equation. We need to take a positive direction. Always a good idea in the direction of motion. So we'll take downwards as positive. We've got S, U, V, A, and T. What do we know? Well, S, the displacement from here to here, is going to be H. U, the initial speed, was 0. V, well, V we want to find. That's going to be V, B, as it hits the ground here. Acceleration, well, it's attached to the string here, so it's 4 ninths g, so 4 ninths g. And as for the time, well, we're not interested in how long it took to go down here, so we can forget about that. So let's get rid of that. So what would we use to connect these variables together? Well, it would be using the equation, let's just mark it in, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. 
If we do that, then what we've got is that VB, the final velocity of B, all squared, is equal to, well, U being 0, we could forget that term, U squared, that 0 squared, which is naught. Then we've got 2 times A, which is 4 ninths G, 4 ninths G, times S, which is H. So if I tidy this up, I've got 8 ninths G, H, and I'm going to take the square root now to get VB. So we've got the square root of 8 ninths G, H. OK? And that would be meters per second as it comes down through here. Now that we've got that final velocity, I need to get this acceleration. So how do I do that? Well, what I'm going to do is consider the particle A somewhere in between these two stages, somewhere in here. Now, because I haven't got much room, what I'm going to do is just re-sketch this section in here. Okay? I'm going to look at the forces acting on the particle. So if I just draw my particle in like so, what are the forces acting on it at this stage here? Well, we've got the weight. The weight is going to be mg newtons. We've got the reaction acting upwards, r newtons. We've got the friction opposing motion, OK, so that's going to be mu r. We've already seen that mu is 2 thirds, that's going to remain exactly the same throughout the problem, 2 thirds r. Now r is going to be mg, so I'm going to write that as 2 thirds mg newtons, that's mu r, OK? Now, there is no tension at the front here, because as soon as b hits the ground, the string goes slack, so there's no pulling force, OK? Only just this resistance, which is going to slow the particle down. And we've got an acceleration now over the top here, A, OK? Which I've called up here. And we've got to find A, so to do that, what I'm going to do is resolve. We're going to consider A, so we just put this down here. As I say, I'm a bit pushed for space here. Let's see if we can squeeze it in here, OK? So just bear with me on this one. Consider A. Going to resolve in the direction of motion, so that's moving to the right, OK? And what would our equation be? Well, it will be minus 2 thirds mg, minus 2 thirds mg, is equal to the mass, m, times the acceleration, a. And can you see the m's would cancel, and that would leave me with the acceleration of particle a as being minus 2 thirds g. We'd expect a negative because it is now decelerating. OK, so we're nearly at the stage where we can find the final velocity of a as it hits P. Because what we need to do now, OK, let's just come down through here. Well, actually, I most probably can fit it in here. So we'll just say consider A again. Looking at a SUVAT equation, S, U, V, A. We'll ignore time because we don't need the time. What is S? S is the third H, or H over 3. U was this velocity here, which was the same as VB when it hit down here. I should say it's the same speed, different velocity because the directions are different. But we can pick up that speed. We found it out here. It was square root of 8 ninths GH. I'm just going to write that, though, as VB in there. V we want to find. And the acceleration we've got, it was minus 2 thirds g. Minus 2 thirds g. And I'm taking, by the way, to the right as positive. OK? So what equation could we use to connect these together? 
Well again, it's going to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So, the final velocity, that's going to be v a, all squared, equals u squared, which is v b, all squared, and we can see that will be 8 ninths gh. So we'll put that in then as 8 ninths gh plus 2 times the acceleration. The acceleration is minus 2 thirds g. So we've got minus 2 thirds g there. And h, well h was, I should say s, is a third h. So we've got 1 third h there. Okay. Now if you work that out, what you get is 4 ninths gh. Okay, so we've got 4 ninths gh. That is va squared, so therefore va, the speed that a hits the pulley, is going to be the square root of this. We can square root the 4 ninths and get 2 thirds, and then just leave root gh inside the square root sign there. Okay, so that brings us now to the end of this part of the question.